So Takashi wrote an article on our Facebook page about dashi. So dashi is kind of, as he's written in his article, it's the cornerstone of, of Japanese cuisine, and um, it's, it, it's, it's used in our broth and stuff like that. So I just want to, I've got a few questions. I'll let him talk about them first, actually, and then I've got a few questions for him. And if you have any questions out there, we might take one or two, depending on time. OK. So do you want to tell us a little bit about, just about dashi and how it's made? OK, uh, dashi is uh, the Japanese broth. Uh, it's based of the Japanese cuisine. Um, we use a dashi, like, a, you know, the chicken broth or, you know, beef stock or like that. But dashi is the Japanese version of the made from uh, uh, kombu. Uh, kombu is a sugar, uh, sugar kelp, uh, seaweed. And after I finish up with the uh, uh, bonito flake. Uh, bonito is a, a type of tuna, uh, but more stronger than the tuna and much smaller. And uh, so dried bonito, actually. Um, and then we, uh, we shaved them, and then just uh, finish up that. So that mainly the dashi is a uh, uh, kind of uh, stock from the, in the ocean, from the sea. Yeah. Okay. So we use the dashi uh, such as stew dish, or sometimes I use to make a dressing, or uh, marinate yeah. liquid, and so, so many ways we could use it. And maybe you might just exp explain exactly, like, it's really simple to make, isn't it? And what's, what I find fascinating is kombu kelp, which mm -hmm. is one of the main ingredients, yeah. is abundant in the, in the Irish, in our Irish water, actually, and the Irish seas, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I may use, uh, uh, when I make, uh, when I use uh, Irish seaweed, and uh, still I could use it, and especially uh, Irish sugar kelp, I have tried it, and uh, it works. And uh, also um, sea spaghetti. Sp sp sea spaghetti, yeah. yeah. And uh, dried sea spaghetti has a great uh, flavor and umami too. So and, and am I correct in saying, like, I mean, you talk about it as an umami flavor, and it's, mm -hmm. it helps to, to coat your tongue nearly, isn't it? When it, when it, it yeah, it's a, a savor, a savor a flavor. Uh, some people ask about uh, what is umami. It's hard to explain. I, when I say, uh, when you taste a really nice uh, comfort food or something, and when you feel like, ah, this is nice, that is umami. So <laughs> this is, ah, <laughs> that's an umami. Sounds like a Colleen Sully soup. I've got to get that yeah. in there, don't I? <laughs> it's a, yeah, dashi is very dedic dedicated. The Japanese cuisine is, is quite dedicated too. So you, on your palate, you get the uh, slightly uh, sweetness uh, from the seaweed. That is umami. So... So when we were making our, our broths, we were tasting different stocks, some with dashi in it and some without. I was amazed how little dashi, like if you were making a stock, how much dashi would you put into, say, a liter of, of, of stock? Uh, the stock itself, dashi, so. Okay. Yeah, uh, when I make a miso soup, uh, so whole dashi. Yeah. For example, uh, two liter of the dashi I use it. And then miso, uh, probably 60 grams or something like, and then just a... Yeah, 60 mixer. grams of, in, in, yeah, in like a litre of... 60 to 100. If you're making a yeah. miso soup. Yeah. And if you're making something like a beef broth, would you ever make... See, this is the, quite the difference between being Japanese because I'm kind of relating it back to, like, we don't make miso soup, really. We might make a beef broth or something like that. If you're adding dashi to a beef broth or, broth or a beef stock, the two words are getting more and more sort of confused or um, mm -hmm. bone broth as well. Would yeah. you add dashi to something like that? Yeah, dashi, uh, dashi is quite work and uh, kind of every, all the ingredients. Yeah. So dashi works with the beef, uh, meat, pork, uh, chicken, well, and uh, fish, of course. Yeah. So uh, even like uh, when I make a food, uh, I make a keep a nice uh, balance of triangle ingredients, uh, uh, three acids. So which okay. is a uh, glutamic acid from the, such as seaweed and uh, inosinic acid such as animal, which okay. is a uh, meat, pork and like that. And uh, another one is a uh, gyanilic acid, which is from mushroom. So okay. we use the mushroom, uh, even like a shiitake, dried shiitake mushroom, they have a great umami flavor. So three different uh, type of acid, and then keep the balance, and then dish comes up. And then the dish. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic and, and really interesting, and it's really interesting how you can apply it, I suppose, to, to more Irish cuisine. This kind of leads me on to one of my, one of the, a question from one of the people who wrote into our Facebook page. It was Aaron Doherty asked, do you think Ireland, why do you think Ireland near lost its culinary heritage 
of eating seaweed while Japan never lost the same. So why do you think we, why do you think in Ireland we don't eat seaweed? And we're, I mean, actually, you could say that for fish as well, in a way. I think uh, I've been living in Ireland 11 years, and I found uh, because that the difference, the main dish is different from Japan. Okay. Because uh, Japan is a we our main dish is the mostly like a seaweed or, or seafood, right? Yeah. And here in Ireland, we got we got great beef, you know. Yes. And great pork and a chicken, and a, such as a roast dish. So, it would be work roast dish with seaweed, okay? <laughs> Sounds Sometimes weird. like you know mashed potato mixed with seaweed like that. Yeah. Yeah, but. Uh, People don't use much because the main thing is that you have strong, you know, roast dinner or something like that. And, and actually, that, that um, leads me on very well to the next question, which is from a girl called Trish Carlos, who asked, what is your favorite local Irish ingredient and what dish do you use it in most? I have uh, <laughs> loads of uh, <laughs> my favorites, uh, Irish well, ingredients. Or maybe, maybe just some Irish ingredients that you, you love to use and how you apply it to Japanese cuisine. Um, actually, I like, I like um, the lamb. Yeah. And uh, in Japan, it's very hard to get the lamb. And uh, even like uh, in Japan, northern side, uh, they have a uh, mutton. But not the lamb, mutton. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Um, My hometown is so hard to get that. So okay. we all, always import it. Like, so in Japan, to get the lamb dish, uh, lamb chop, uh, so hard and it's quite expensive. But um, my wife, uh, she's from County Offaly, and uh, her dad is a farmer. And uh, he has a uh, uh, bog land and also sheep farm. Uh, my favorite one is the, uh, uh, it's called body cumber, body cumber lamb. It's the uh, County Offaly lamb. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting thing that we don't do very well in here in Ireland, isn't it? Is to, like the French do it, you know, the way everything has got an Appalachian controlé, and it's such a pity we don't have a better way of picking out specific ingredients from specific places and, and really developing them. Mm. And potato is good too. And potato? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not a big uh, potato eater, but uh, I miss uh, it's great waxy potato from the organic farm. Like. Oh, well, I was going to just ask that. I mean, Janie Mack, th can you deal with Irish flowery potatoes yet? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, make it, make it, yeah. Make it, okay. yeah. I, actually, uh, I have a takeaway and uh, takeaway shop, and uh, made um, the beef Irish stewed beef and then potato and then some onion. That's a typical Japanese. Food. It's called nikujaga. I said that was really, really good, really and it, okay. the texture is different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm a big fan of it. Like and then you said Janie Mac. Um, <laughs> uh, Macker, is amazing. Macker Irish is, Macker is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so cheap, um, it's just an extraordinary ingredient. So, Oini has a question, and I thought, again, you're making this very easy for me. Do you forage much yourself? So we're moving away here from lamb and stuff that's farmed. Um, do you forage much yourself for seaweed, and what is your favorite one to pick? So do you specifically forage for seaweed? Um, when I have time, uh, family time, uh, I go. Uh, I bring my uh, boys, uh, two boys, going to the beach. And uh, it's a sandy beach. You can get the uh, sea, gra sea grass. It's the season is finishing now, but it depends on season what we want. So sea grass, uh, we make a sea grass tempura. Okay, right. Yeah, that was uh, which is I never made it in Japan. You know, sea grass, sea grass tempura. tempura. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Actually, I, I can't help but think of my grandmother and every photo, so many of the photographs of her down on the beach picking carrageen moss pudding. I think she's. It's almost her face at this stage is just of a uh, Myrtle Allen of Ballymenu, by the way, um, is that of her picking on the beach on the very low tides, picking carrageen moss pudding. Um, so I'm going to take one, more, one or two more questions here, and then if any of you guys have any questions while you have a chance, um, um, I'd love to hear them. And I think this is very interesting. How do you check for the freshness of your fish when you're making um, sashimi? <laughs> yeah. Um, Sashimi. Our, I was actually sushi. Sashimi. sashimi or sushi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, uh, we make a lot of sashimi uh, in the restaurant. Um, the main things, that may, probably you, you've heard about, you know, the see the eyes or check the gill, uh, which is true. And the first things I, I go to a fishmonger or a market and I see the uh, eyes. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit gray. It's too late for my sashimi, okay? And just really bright eyes and check the gill. 
But thing is, like, uh, you can't touch in the fish monger. If you touch it, and they say, hey, you know. Yeah. So uh, try to get uh, the staff, uh, fish monger, and uh, you ask, can, it, can you see, my, uh, see me as the gill? Yes. Yeah, and the gill is a really bright red Color. one. Is, yeah, if it's like a pink, it's too late. Okay, okay? so red specific from pink, mm -hmm. which yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, kind of, you need to touch the, the just the fillet parts. Yeah, yeah, if it's like a really nice form, and uh, it's good. Yeah. If it's really like a soft, your finger is going <laughs> into, into the meat, yeah. that's a uh, need to be cooked anyway. Uh, and I think that's a, uh, something that we all should be much braver about doing, actually, is when we go down to the fishmongers to really ask and challenge the whoever's behind the counter on how fresh the fish is and make sure that you do care and let them know if you don't think it was fresh and you'll find you might get much better fish the next time. Just... We got you a little cup of water there if you want, if you're getting thirsty. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we, have, we have a question here out in the audience. What part of Japan are you from? Ah, I'm from the uh, very south. Uh, it's called Fukuoka. Fukuoka, yes. Uh, okay, so Tokyo, Osaka, Hiroshima, and Fukuoka, like that. So, yeah, my area is kind of starting like a tropical. On cancer, uh, on, on watch the, uh, uh, yeah, the cancer after Hiroshima, yeah. 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 Do we have another, we have another, blue? Oh, from the blue fin, is it from the tuna? The bullet train. Uh, oh, bullet train. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Shinkansen, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, Tokyo and Fukuoka. There's a, there's a uh, bullet train, yes. Another question here out in the audience, yeah. So that's the question is, does vegetarian dashi exist? Exists, actually. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called kombu dashi. And yeah, so my dashi, uh, I sometimes I use a kombu dashi. When I make a um, kind of tofu, and uh, I make a kombu dashi, so which, which is like a few different way, but the ingredients are very simple: um, sugar kelp and water. So if you soak, if you use that, uh, you need to use the uh, dried sugar kelp kombu, okay? And uh, in a pot, the full of water, and then you put the uh, dried sugar kelp, and uh, leave in the fridge one night. That's it. You don't need to cook it. And uh, you can, that's a uh, kombu water, we call. Yeah. And uh, you can use for even dressing or something. You, you can use it. Stew dish, vegetarian, you can use it. Uh, and you just say sugar kelp there. Is that different ingredient to if I go to, we use wild gigantic um, seaweeds for our, for our, our um, seaweed and this. What can, can be seaweed inside, in the, inside in that? Is that a different? Is it a different kelp or sugar kelp? Can you use the same one? Yeah, sugar kelp is the yeah, uh, best way to make uh, uh, my style. My, my your, your style yeah. of it, yeah. Mm. But but you're saying, but you can use other Irish seaweeds as well, probably. You you can use it. Yeah. yeah. But um, mm, some dish uh, I have to stick with the Japanese sugar kelp. Yeah. Too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, any other questions there from the audience? Just a matter of interest. No. So I have a question here from Helen McCarthy. What is your proudest moment in your career? What is the proudest moment in your career? Did you? Okay, how about this then? Was it more proud to be opening up your original restaurant or, or your, your fancy dining restaurant? I think uh, all my uh, career, is, uh, I, I, I should, I'm proud of it. Uh, what I, I start to learn cooking. Uh, I started cooking for my friends when I was a university student. And then that thing has started. So um, my, my father wanted me to be a policeman, but I, I said, no, I want to be a chef. And then being chef over 25 years. So, yeah. so all my career, is, I'm proud of it. I'm, yeah. I'm standing here. I, so. <laughs> I had a great moment. I was, I was I would, just by coincidence, we ate Nichikowichi on its very first night. Um, it just popped up and my wife booked it, which was great. And halfway through the meal, I was like, what does Ichigo Ichi mean? 
Uh, and yes. what, what did you say? Once in a lifetime, is that correct? Yeah, once in a lifetime. And then you say, you're not going to come back. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> I didn't. I said, you should have called it every Friday night. <laughs> Um, one or two more questions, so, and then we'll get the blind tasting going, so we'll get the guys going. Um, you've, asked, uh, you've answered the first one there. Oh, here's a nice one. Miriam Levy O'Reilly wants to know, what would be the best Japanese dish to make for the first venture into Japanese cuisine? So what would you, if someone's cooking Japanese for the first time, what recipes would you recommend for them? I say a stew dish. Um, myself, I, I love uh, cooking stew, stew dish. So, uh, so many things, and even seafood or um, vegetables, vegetables and uh, meat or so. Uh, base dashi. So make yeah. the base dashi first. Yeah. And uh, put something, and uh, one hour, two hours later, and the uh, taste and the flavor is changing. Yeah. That, that's great. You you see uh, that's. A, uh, dashi based of Japanese cuisine. It's, it's interesting that you mention a stew as, as Japanese cuisine. I think it's the last thing we'd think of when we're thinking of Japanese cuisine is a, is a, is a stew. And maybe just one last question, even for myself, to ask it. If you're making sashimi or sushi or whatever in Ireland, what Irish fish would you recommend for doing that? Uh, as I said, I'm a big fan of the mackerel, but mackerel has to be really, really fresh. So if you ask uh, fishmonger, uh, I want to use uh, for sashimi or sushi. Can I use this one? And the fishmonger can give you fresh one. Give you fresh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then go home and just fry it. <laughs> if you get the really good fresh stuff. Oh, even uh, fried mackerel is amazing. Great flavor. <laughs> Love it. Okay, guys. I think we're going to do a bit of blind tasting. This is great fun.